Are we ready? Yes. Morning, everyone. Welcome to Strip Club. Good morning. Good morning. Um, it's um, a great day to have a Strip Club presentation because we're inside and it's hot outside. So today's Strip Club is called, um, what is it called? Counting Stars? Counting Stars. Isn't that a romantic name? It starts with two and a half inch strips. Can you believe it? With this particular pattern, we use the two and a half inch strips with background. So aside from background and borders, this is a great way to use up your two and a half inch strip. It doesn't call for any other accent or any other uh, two color background. We often do that with patterns to give it more interest. This one's very simple. It's just two and a half inch strips and background. The strips that you see um, here are a collection off of, our, um, um, off of the floor of our quilt shop. So we've put this collection together. It's a mix and match. Um, it all started, as is often the case when we pick fabric, um, with a border print or a focus fabric, and then we pull the fabrics to go with. Um, we liked the grays and the um, light blues and uh, a little bit of black pop in there. That's how we put that collection together. What you have here is the throw quilt, and it actually uses 21 strips. I know, I know, 21 strips. That's one more strip than a half pack or the 20 packs. But don't worry, the pattern is written so that you can cut an extra two and a half inch strip out of your border two fabric. Because we're clever like that. <laughs> so you can start with a bundle of 20 and then just cut another two and a half inch strip off your border two. Or our clever girls here at Cozy, they made the kit so it does start with 21 strips to begin with. So if you buy your kit from us, we have, take, we have it taken care of. It's a pretty simple pattern. There are a couple of different components, though. Do you want to see how it comes together? Yes. Let's start with the main block. I'm going to show you the main block first, and then I'm going to show you how to put it together. This one's fun because it uses a couple of different techniques. The first one for the main block, and this is your simple main block. Oop, let's put it straight. Now. Is that not a simple block or what? So the background is also cut into two and a half inch strips. And let me think for a moment. It's all cut using, oh no, we have a four and a half inch square there. I was going to say, if you ever see a pattern that uses nothing but two and a half inch strips for a background, you can start with a pre-cut bundle. In this case, you still could, but this little piece here is four and a half inch. So you'd either have to piece it or use a different background, which I'll leave you to thinking through that because that could be very interesting. Okay, so with your, um, to make your block here, the first thing we do is sew a couple of our print strips together to make a strip set. And then from there, we will cut out two and a half inch segments like this. You follow? The pattern will tell you which way to press your strips. Now we're going to make a four patch. We will need another two and a half inch strip, two and a half inch segment out of a strip set like this. And then, and I'm still amazed at the simple four patch, how cool it is. So you sew strips together, you get a segment, you get another segment, and then you put two segments together and there you have a four patch. I'm easily amazed. But I think it's still so cool, the four patch. There's your four patch, see how the four patch is right here? Do you see that? Yes. Yeah, you have to reassure me. <laughs> yeah. I'm doing okay so far? Yeah. Okay, so far so good. Okay, so let's grow this four patch. We're going to add a background segment on the top and the bottom. You follow? Mm -hmm. Oh, look, I have a pre done four patch. <laughs> let's use the actuals. Much nicer. Doop, doop, doop. And if you're wondering what these beautiful colors are, this is from my collection, um, Tonga Sunburst. This is so much fun. I sometimes feel like a cooking show. Because you know on a cooking show, they are <coughs> put it in the oven for 30 minutes, and then they go to the oven, and they pull it out, and it looks like this. So go to the oven and pull it out, and it looks like this. Yes? Yes. yes? yes. Thank you. Thank you for assuring me. Now here I have a print background with um, a print square with a background segment. Another one just like it, that this one's going to go on the other side of the block, like that. Ta-da. Ta-da. Thank you. 
That's how you put the main block together. Is it hard? No. Of course not. Nothing we do is hard. You know why nothing we do is hard? Because we do one a month. <laughs> okay, so that's our main block. In addition to the main block, we need sashing. The sashing will look like this. You starting to see how it comes together in the quilt now? Yep. So to make the sashing, again, we need print strips and we need background strips. Now we're going to use a different technique. It's a um, draw a diagonal line on the back of your fabric, stitch on that line, flip, and open up. So it's a stitch and flip technique. If you don't want to draw the diagonal line, class, what's our favorite tool? The folded corner clipper. It's by Prairie Sky Quilting. And with that tool, you can cut the two pieces at once, take it to the sewing machine, and sew. You do not have to draw lines. It's perfect every time, as long as you sew quarter inch seam. But that's on you. OK, but here's how it will come together if you don't have the folded corner clipper. Here we have a segment that's placed on um, a background segment that's placed on a print segment. There's a diagonal line right here, very faint. Um, it is very faint because this will actually be used in a quilt, and we don't want it to show through the fabric. But follow my fingers. You're going to stitch from here down to there to create a diagonal seam, and then open it up. OK? Very nice? So when you know those edges are flush, only then can you trim away that excess fabric. Can you leave that excess fabric in your quilt? You can't. It's nicer if you trim it away because it removes some of that bulk. Especially in this one, there's no need to keep it in there. So that's one. Now you're going to make another one very similar, but different. We're done with this, right? You got that. So I say very similar, but different. Can you see what the difference is? Let me show you this, like this. It's, um, it's the same size. Here, here we go. The difference is the placement of the background. While it looks the same, it's actually mirror image. And this is very important, because when you stitch and flip, you need one to go one way and the other to go the other way. Do you see it? And then when you sew it together, you don't sew it together like that, because that's a different quilt. <laughs> you will sew it together like that. You follow? Here, I'll prove it to you. Sashing. OK? Yep. Another component is a um, solid cornerstone. The solid cornerstone we talked about briefly already, it's this piece right here. So that is a four and a half inch square of solid. So you'll cut those, follow the directions. If you follow the directions, it's already cut. But then we have one other cornerstone. So we actually have two cornerstones in the quilt. The second cornerstone looks like this. So now we have another technique to put these cornerstones together. This one is the strip tube ruler. We get to use all of our favorite techniques. <laughs> we use the strip tube ruler. You can use the main one, senior, as we like to call him, the original strip tube ruler. Or you can use strip tube junior. Here, I'll hold up junior for you. He's so cute. <laughs> Do you know that we originally came out with the main one, which is nine and a half inches? And then we came out with junior, and he's six and a half inches. And the main reason we came out with Junior is because it's easier to make smaller cuts with a smaller ruler. Um, senior does everything Junior does. Junior only goes up to six and a half inches, so he doesn't do everything that Senior does. But when Junior first came in, our very first shipment, someone in our um, wholesale operations department took Junior and put a diaper on him <laughs> and sent me a picture and said, the new baby's arrived. <laughs> Junior. 
So I have one junior out of the package. Oh, we need fabrics. Yes, I'll know they're always, they're always on the floor, aren't they? Whenever in doubt, if you can't find something in your studio, trust me, it's on the floor. Or check the cat paws, <laughs> right? Okay, so here I have um, a print segment sewn to a background, right sides together. If it's a batik, don't worry about right sides together, it's all right sides. Quarter inch seam up along the top and down the bottom. Pay no attention to that diagonal line. You do not see that diagonal line. <laughs> so this is a tube. We've created a tube by sewing on the top, on the bottom. And now we have Junior, undiapered. We put the um, measurement on the bottom stitching line and cut up and cut down to cut out a triangle. Whoops. One of those measurements. Up and down to cut out a triangle. Class, are you ready? You do play a part in this. <laughs> triangle looks a little bit like this. Open it up, and you'll get your ha a half square triangle block. Right. Hey, that was really good. Half square triangle block like that. Yeah? Um, you have to trim away the dog ears. Those poor little dogs. I'm just kidding, I love dogs. <laughs> The dog ears are here on the corners, the little triangles on the corners. Easiest way to trim those away. Again, we use the strip tube ruler only. This time the triangle is in the opposite direction. We put the same measurement on the stitching line as we did before, but instead of cutting into the tube, we cut away the triangles on each side. That's a bonus tip. <laughs> I'm not going to charge you for that one. <laughs> Next time we cut, aha. <clears throat> Now the diagonal plays a role. We cut away that piece. You with me? Now we know why that's there. Next time we cut, let's flip the tube over and cut from the other stitching line to cut out another triangle. It's the same angle, but please make clean cuts, new cuts, conserve fabric. The reason you want um, clean cuts is you want the second block to be based on the stitching line, not on the stitching line of the previous block. That's why we make clean cuts. Even though tendency is just butt it right up against and cut, you will eventually create mistakes that will magnify exponentially. I'm very proud of my big words. <laughs> All right, you can cut up and down the tube, make a bunch of them. Four of them come together. You see the half square triangle in the and the cornerstone block, one, two, three, four come together to make the cornerstone. If you're making the baby, you have fewer fabrics to work with, so chances are you will have more of a sort of a four patch effect. If you're making the larger size, you have more, so you can make more of a scrappy effect like that. Okay, so we have a main block, we have sashing, we have cornerstone two, cornerstone one is just a square. Now we just have to sew the blocks together, right? Let's see it come together. Main block. There's your main block. You can see it. I don't know if you can see the background print in this. Does it just look like white on white to you? You should come close when you get a chance, zoom in to here and see the fabric because it's a real cool um, tone on tone print. It's got a real um, circular print in it. It's really neat. Okay, so we have the main block, sashing. Main block, now twisted in a different way, sashing. Sashing is in a different direction. Main block, sashing, back to the same one, main block. So we're twisting and turning to get the effect. In the second row, we have sashing. So now it's um, horizontal. We have a cornerstone. This is a um, solid fabric background. Sashing, here's a different cornerstone. Do you see it coming together? Yep. Sashing, solid cornerstone, sashing. So your um, first row and all odd rows will be blocks and vertical sashing. Your second row and all even rows will be horizontal sashing and the cornerstones.
that's a fun ringtone. Um, visually, this is how it comes together. Four sashing pieces come together so that the main blocks, the little squares, shadow the main, shadow the sashing, and it's a solid um, cornerstone in the middle, creating the star. Okay? And then, offset with the star is this diamond in a diamond effect. The diamond is the cornerstone, and then the background creates another diamond. So if you can achieve that, visually you have achieved the quilt. Now you can do whatever you want with your quilt. There's no quilt police, and we certainly don't come around and grade what you do. This is just how this is intended to lay out. But wait, there's more. <laughs> What more could there be, Daniela? Well, no, let's not jump to another colorway yet. Let's talk about the border cornerstones, shall we? Optional. You don't have to do them. But I love the way the chain effect just do 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 right to the corner. Right? Did you, you like the you like the sound effects? Yeah. This looks complicated. It's very easy. Just think of it as a 16 patch. There's just 16 squares in there to make the border. I'm going to show it to you, and I think you know how it comes together after that. So, this is <laughs> this is the top right cornerstone, and I know it's the top right. I can tell you that the outermost border in this quilt is going to be green. You see it? Mm -hmm. And here we have fabrics left over from our strips. One, a pair of two, and another pair of two, and then background prints. So you just sew this together as you would a normal block. You make four identical ones, and then you will twist and turn them in each, each of the corners so that you get the do 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 effect. Mm -hmm. Please do it when you put it together. <laughs> if you forget, just watch this video over again. Do 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 do. Um, so with that in the corner, it takes the um, diagonal chain effect all the way out to the edge. And all we're doing is picking up the fabrics that are in um, the border. When you do sew your border on, you will sew border one and two together to make one segment. Then add it to the quilt. Add your left and your right first. And then for your top and your bottom, add the cornerstones to the ends of the border cornerstone, border, cornerstone, then add it to your quilt. You follow that? Yep. Yes. Cornerstones, borders. Optional, but I like the effect. Do you have any questions? Is that one row short of what it says throw is on here? I don't think it is one row short of what it says throw on there, although I may. I'm counting the little thingies and I'm <coughs> So how many? I will say that this throw the, um, in the corners, this is why I say it's optional. Because it's an odd number of blocks going down, the chain effect, the do 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 do, doesn't quite hit at the bottom. And I'm okay with that. At the top it does, you see what I'm saying? And it's because it's the odd number of rows. So if you're doing a quilt that has an odd number of rows, um, you, can skip the, you can skip the cornerstone part if, if the link the missing link here bothers you. Fair enough. Only two sizes are odd numbers. All right. Are we? Did we miscount? Are there five rows in here? Four rows across, five rows down. This is four by five, right? Five rows down? Four by five, five rows down. All right, would you want to see another colorway? This is a nod to Lori Holt. You know Lori Holt? She's a designer for Riley Blake. And we featured a lot of her fabrics in this wonderful quilt. Because, wait, Keiko, how many days? 134 days till Christmas. 
And that's if you watch the video today. <laughs> so get on your Christmas quilts. Isn't it cute? Do you love the background fabric? It's just got a little sparkle, little stars in it. And cornerstones are great, aren't they? Let's see if I can, let me put my, let me uh, increase my own wingspan and see if I can get that out. Pretty. So this is counting stars. And this features um, the Lori Hall fabrics. Background is fabulous. Christmassy without, without being too Christmassy. Yes, I like it very much. Do we have any questions? No questions? Well, if we don't have any questions, then I thank you for coming. And shall we do it again next month? Yes. For another pattern that uses two and a half inch strips.